Welcome to Vintage Tin Plate Toys. Repairing a Cherokee Special Turnabout Loco, exactly the same as the one that I had as a child. This vintage tin plate toy did work, but not very well. I figured out what the problem was and fixed it. A very simple job, which does make a change. I bought this from the auction site that we all know and love, and believe it or not, it cost under £15, including postage. When I opened the parcel that the postman brought, I was very pleased with what was inside. This small locomotive and a track that it rides up and down on. I thought it was a good idea to wind it up with the key provided to see whether or not it worked. This key is not the original, but it doesn't really matter, I'm not a collector. This is a Triang Minic key and it fits the engine perfectly. I can see that there is some damage to the track, let's see how it works. Well, it works. The track's a bit bent, but the engine, the main part, works perfectly. Let's have a quick look at how it works. This metal peg in the base of the locomotive engages with the slot in the track, and when it gets to the end it can go no further. You will notice that only one of the wheels has a rubber tyre, and this simply turns the locomotive around. It's actually not quite as tight on the axle as I would like, but it works OK, so I'm not going to go any further with that. I remember getting one of these for Christmas many years ago. I was born in 1953, so possibly it would have been around 1960. It was playing with toys like this from an early age that taught me such a lot. And I was forever dismantling things like this to see how they worked. Nothing's changed. At nearly 70 years old, I'm doing the same. There's a definite problem with the track, though, and I can see what's happened. The centre section is far from level, mainly because the support underneath that keeps the track level is not connected at each end. These slots should have a tab in them like the others. Sometime in the past, maybe someone has stood on this, which has pulled the tabs out of the slots. These tabs are very functional and it's very important that they are fully engaged with the top of the track. The worst case scenario is if the tabs are broken off, but I can clearly see that they aren't. By using my small kitchen knife to carefully remove the other tabs, I can withdraw the support from underneath. And now I can clearly see what the problem is. This has been very badly bent at some time. So what I'm going to do is straighten it, but I'm not going to use a hammer, that would damage the paint. Instead, I'm going to use my small kitchen knife to lever the track in an upwards direction by pressing the knife down onto the workbench. Slowly but surely, the track started to look better. It's not going to be perfect, but I'm not bothered about that. It's quite good for a thing like this to show some of its age. I'll put this down to a very sympathetic restoration. By repeating the kitchen knife process, eventually I got the track quite straight. Now it's time to refit the part that supports the track from underneath. First of all, though, I'm very carefully straightening the tabs. You really do have to be very gentle with these. They won't stand much bending before they break off. Thankfully, these seem to be quite firm, and I press them back into position using the edge of a small pair of pliers. First at one end, and then I turn the part over to close the tabs at the other end. I reseat the tabs on the track at each end first, and then I do the four in the middle. I had to use my kitchen knife on one of these tabs because it was a bit close to the side, and once it was partially bent over, I finished off the job with the pair of pliers. Now the track and its base sits perfectly level on the workbench. At this time, using some kitchen cleaner, I gave it a bit of a wipe. The painted image of the valve gear on the side of the locomotive makes me smile. This is a physical impossibility, but who cares, it's just a toy. And now it seems to work a whole lot better. There's still a little bit of a dip in the track in the centre, but I'm not too worried about that. The small engine runs up and down the track far better than it did when I first tried it. 
I don't want to dismantle the engine because it's basically okay, but I do need to apply some oil. So what I'm doing is applying oil in a couple of places. This is high quality steam engine lubricating oil, but possibly something thinner like 3-in-1 may have been better. I thought it would be a good idea to use some WD-40 and give the top of the track a really good clean. And while I was at it I squirted some of this WD-40 into the bottom part of the locomotive, which mixes with the oil I've already applied and helps to both clean the mechanism and spread the oil that I've already applied to where I need it to be. This is where I used the WD-40 on the track and then wiped over the top of the track. For something as old as this it's looking quite good. The wheels are slightly wobbly but I think they were probably like this when it was new. The main thing is look how well it runs. Because of the oil and WD-40 reducing the friction inside the locomotive, it runs very well to the end of its cycle. In a previous episode of this series, I worked on this tin plate toy. It's called an Arnold shunting train. And it works in an entirely different way to the one that I've just shown. If you want to know how this works, please watch the video where I repaired it. It runs very well now and there's no comparison with the way it ran when I first bought it. This toy doesn't have a motor in the locomotive. Instead, believe it or not, it is driven by a cloth belt around the two pulleys inside the track. These sort of toys are actually quite mad. They serve no function other than to make you go, oh yeah, look at that. As a child though, things like this stimulated my brain and made me what I am today. Not 100% right and verging on insanity sometimes. I think it's probably a good idea to run both of these vintage tin plate toys at the same time. Try not to get too overexcited. My favourite tin plate toy that I have is this. It's a robot that walks up and down while simultaneously rotating its eyes and running a film in the TV screen in its chest. Health and safety warning, look at this. This is the antenna that sticks in the head of the robot and switches it on. And it's really sharp. I had one of these robots when I was a child, but of course what happened to my robot I took it apart to see how it worked and never really put it back together again. So that's long gone. I bought this one more recently. But I did remember thinking at the time that the antenna was dangerous. And the end is more than sharp enough to stick in the eye of a child. Thankfully, I never did that. This robot, called an Alps robot, ALPS, was made in Japan. To finish the video, I'm going to return to the Cherokee Special Turnabout Loco. This was made in the UK. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.